Okay, welcome back to the second part of the show. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the C level yes. of uh, HR in the financial service industry in Vietnam. What do you think they should do to keep up with the uh, increasing sophisticated financial industry of the country? I, I think that's the 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 staff who start working in the bank or finance industry. They, they need to have to the roadmap for his career, for his or her career here. In the development of the career in this sector, they can have a two direction. Uh, the first one, they can become an expert in the particular field. We need a lot of the uh, specialists in different fields to combine together mm -hmm. to, pro to provide one kind of product or service to serve the, the customer. And the same, second one, they can promote to the managerial position. In, in the institution. Normally, you can see that in the markets when you start working in a bank after five years or 10 years, mm -hmm. you will, normally they will promote to the position of head of the department or someone can be the director of the branch. More 15 or 20 years, some of them can promote to, sometimes to the top management of the bank, just a CEO or deputy CEO. However, both uh, expert or managerial position, you need the preparation for the promotion in your career. So I mentioned that they can do it by three ways. The first one, they have to learn from the working experience. Because the working experience is very important. You cannot become an expert right. or, or the manager without the working experience. The and, but, and But if you just only work in one particular job, it's very difficult for you. So you can you can work in different job in the bank. So to get the overall picture, to to understand the overall trend trend transaction activity mm -hmm. uh, of of the bank. I think that the second one is uh, the short training cost. The short training cost may be provided inside the bank or by the institution outside. And the third one is they can go back to the university to get the postgraduate. Degree, like get an yes, MBA. yes, like like get an MBA or MSc okay. or, or EMBA, for example. I think that's two, three, three of them are important. They can do the well, three of them. They can do step by step, or they can do it simultaneously. I want to emphasize about why come back to university to get the degree uh, from in in in, in the postgraduate uh, level is so important here, mm -hmm. because it will help them to review and to systematize the knowledge that they were gained during the time they work in the market. The second one, normally the, the postgraduate program will provide them the more advanced knowledge and they will provide them more in the research skill, in the um, critical thinking and in the problem solving. All the don't remember that most of the module most of the subjects in the curriculum now are not touched 20 or 15 years before. And so if we look at the curriculum in the 20 or 15 years before, a lot of the modules are not available in the current curriculum now. And so come back to university is a very good opportunity for them to update the new knowledge because the technologies and the science will change so fast, especially in this industry. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marcus, uh, mm -hmm. what's your opinion on that? The, mm -hmm. the same question I asked Mr. Wu. Yeah. What should the C-level professional do to keep up with the fast-changing industry? Yeah. I, uh, of course, can underline was, uh, what uh, my colleague Mr. Wu said. Uh, I think uh, the basic skill of a C-level manager is to keep the overview and to be able to, to bundle the diverse uh, workforce. However, uh, it's not easy to get that. In Switzerland, we had actually a shift in the way we trained for C-level managers around 20 years ago. Okay. The banks traditionally trained their staff, let's say, from the bottom to the top. So it was not unlikely that uh, a top manager of a bank, mm -hmm. except for some very basic education, never was trained outside the same bank. Around 20 years ago, they gave up this system and they force now, or force, they help their staff exactly to do what Mr. Wu described. They will follow a very clear, still a clear career path, preferably, of course, inside the same institution, but from time to time they were sent outside to collect practical experience, let's say, in the industry, 
but also to get the next step of knowledge. And this become increasingly important now when the business models begin to change faster and faster. And I think compared with Vietnam, uh, Vietnam has an even higher demand in that, as we all know, the people in top position, they usually didn't experience the same training, the same education system like the younger staff. So it becomes harder and harder for the top management to understand the way of thinking of the young ones. Okay. And the only one to fix that actually is to experience the, some aspects at least of the new education system. What have you and um, other institutions done together mm -hmm. in order to um, work together mm -hmm. to uh, train more professional mm -hmm. to supply the market? To answer that, I just shortly explain how we develop a specific curriculum mm -hmm. of any size. We usually first try to specify very clear what is the, the demand profile. And in order to find uh, out about that, we can do some basic research, for example, analyzing job offers. It's very simple, but uh, it's very important. But then, of course, we collaborate on many levels with experts from the industries. We attract them as guest speakers, for example. We also do consultancy projects. It's very important. So we see what is relevant. We know the theory very well. We follow what is being discussed among academics. We even go a step further. We establish advisory boards, sometimes for projects, sometimes also for whole units. So our university has an advisory board and the people in the advisory board are not academics. They are leading figures from several industries, among them also financial industry, because for Switzerland that's a crucial okay. industry. So we get input, let's say, from the strategical level down to real uh, first-hand uh, exchange of experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Vừa rồi là phần hai của chương trình. Xin mời quý vị đến với phần cuối cùng trong ít phút nữa.